not muted, Sister Love. Oh, I'm not. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. So, so I'm going to ask you to pray. Now you took off your camera, but I'm going to ask you to pray. Not me. I don't know who. Okay. That, that right. Your camera is back on. I'm going to ask you to pray that God would open the eyes of the understanding of his people wherever they are in the world because that misunderstanding that that lack of understanding is hurting us and it is a it is a divine trick of the adversary hmm. two thousand years ago jesus stripped satan of everything he stole from Adam and returned it to the righteous. And here are we waiting for the, for, for, for the wealth of the wicked to be transferred to the righteous when that was already done. It is for us now to access, we have to access what we have been given. You see, Jesus died for all humanity. But until we accept Jesus' salvation, we will not be saved. It's there for us. It is ours. But we access it by accepting it. So, Sister Love, pray this evening that God will open the eyes of the understanding of his people, wherever they are across the globe right now, in Jesus' name. Amen. Heavenly Father, we Abba Father, we thank you, the Lord of hosts, for loving us so much that the word of God in the book of John first said, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and that word was the life of men. And that word is the light. And without that light is darkness. Jesus. No one sees in darkness. Mm -hmm. Darkness mm -hmm. is spiritual blindness. But Father, we thank you, Lord, that you now, you became that light. That light of men you have restored. through the crucifixion and your resurrection, you have restored that word of God, that separation, that separation that took place in the garden of Eden. You, you have restored it back mm. because it was through the world that everything that was made, without that word, nothing is made that is made. Everything created came out of that word. And you breathe, you breathe your breath, which is us human. Jesus. Give it us that same power, that dynamis, to proclaim, to say what the word of God is saying. Mm. Unfortunately, enemy tricked us to now through a metric a patriarch, and we lost it in the garden. Thank you, Lord, for the restoration. Father, we bless yes. you. It's to those who believe, to those, there's no exception, to those who believe, to those who believe. Father, we thank you. Especially for the believers, the house of, mm -hmm. you've given us back uh, that armor, that tool, that tool. The word of God is a double-edged sword. It's a double-edged sword that God into joint and marrow. Jeez. Double eight, or whatever we said will take place. Look at Jacob. He was about to die, almost, but he stood up. Whoever, all the name, Issachar, Simeon, everybody, Judah, whoever he said will do what Joseph, whatever he proclaimed and pronounced, that's what it is. That's what took place. But I will thank you that your word. It's not put in our mouth to say what your word said. 
Father, we thank you, Lord, for the Holy Spirit. Nobody can say or do all that without the Holy Spirit. Thank you, mighty God, for the body of Christ we've been given. Mm -hmm. That word, which is Jesus, which is now the Holy Spirit living us as believers. For that, our prayer tonight is that, Lord, to open the eyes of our understanding, the eyes Jesus of our name. Jesus' that's name. Deeper. That rima, we could read the word of God and read it and read it, but if it's not in our heart, because out of the heart come the issues of of this life, out of out of the heart that the mouth speaketh, and whatever we speak, because now we are created on your image, that will take place. Adam, everything he named. All the things that he named trees, animal, that they, they, those names remain till today. Jesus, the power we have, even our children who are going wayward, it doesn't really matter how dark, how pitch black, how dark, how chaos. Mm. Mm. There'll be no violence in our border. If we proclaim it, it doesn't really matter. Addiction, it doesn't really matter. You saw a widow. Who are, who are in a procession to be buried, out of your compassion, you touch that cup. And the young man came to life. That's the power. When you said, no power, no principality, not even death, nothing was no height, no separate us from the love of which is in Christ Jesus. You mean it. If we can believe it and say it, it will come to pass. Jesus. The truth. You have to know the truth. And the truth will set you free. Oftentimes we read about the truth. But if we don't know the truth, how can we practice it? Father, it's our prayer tonight. Help us believers to know whom you are. Because if you know who you are, that you, God Almighty, when you say a thing, when you it will come to pass. So is our word. Open our eyes of understanding, not to be complaining and whining um, and being and not knowing who we are. Not the enemy use everything that he brings, confusion, commotion, things we hear, bad news to change us, to bring fear, which is the opposite of faith in our life, in our society, destruction here and there. This is not, look, look at the word, you know, the, the the body of Christ, you know, look at the world. It was for this reason that the world was in pitch black and chaos. It was just messed up. But the God spoke life into it. Same Jeez. way we've been given the same authority. The word of God say, go, whatever you see me, you heard of me, written about what you had me do. Go do likewise. Jesus. And he said, go do likewise. Mm. If mm. you put that word in our heart, our world will be a better place. God is, that's why we're ambassador. We're ambassador. When you're ambassador, you speak, you act like the citizen. Even if you're, you can be a Jamaican, if you're ambassador in New York, that citizenship, whatever, still be in New York if you're from Trinidad. We are not from here. We are from heaven. And Father, it's open our eyes so that we won't be complaining. People mm. make fun of ourselves, acting like like slave when in actuality we are prince. God say we are royal princess and prince. Jesus. Father Lord, please, we ask you to have mercy on us. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us. Holy Spirit, you are a helper. Please help us. Open our eyes. When when we are weak, when uh, we are weak and whatever in us, our body aching and everything about us saying that we are nobody, we cannot do it. Holy Spirit, you are a helper. Help us. Help us because the price that was paid is too great. Mm. In but heaven and earth, who made everything, the water, the galaxy. Look at all the seven, all the wonders of this world. For him to come and die took a place. It cost him everything. So that price is too huge. It's too huge to be neglected. It is too huge to, to walk in, in blindness, to, to play around and joke around. 
Father, help us. Father, we thank you. We give you all the praise. And in faith, we ask in that, Lord, let the people of the world come back to God because our world is impacting our generation, our community, the world at large. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Okay. Thank you very much, Sister Love. Father, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. And as you said in your prayer, it cost Jesus everything. And, and you know, that 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 sends, sent a message to me because if you lose your house, you could get it. If you lose all your wealth, you could get it back. But when you've lost all of that, including your own life, Jesus could not get his life back unless God gave him his life back. And that happened because of us. So, Sister Vespa, let's come to you now for the scripture. Unmute, unmute. Uh, okay. I have Romans 8 here that I wanted to read. It's just been on my heart, so I want to read. I'm not going to read all of it, but I'm going to read. Read, some of read, it. read as all everything that the Spirit put you to read. Please read it. <laughs> okay. Romans eight. Yes. Yeah. Romans eight one. There is therefore now no. I'm reading in the um, King James version of the Bible. I don't. I'm never uh, with a computer, so I'm reading from my Bible. Okay. Here. It says there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For the law of the spirit is, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus have made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But we are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. So we right here, Brother Joel, can you um because you say right now it says we are not in the flesh but in the spirit. Amen. If so be that the spirit of God dwells in us. So we are not in the flesh because we are children of God, joint heirs with Christ. Is that what this is saying? It is saying that we no longer live by the flesh. Now, yeah. when he talks about the flesh. Mm -hmm. Is talking about our five senses. Right. Now understand what Paul is saying here mm -hmm. is that before we were born again, mm -hmm. we were dead in our trespasses and sins. Right. In other words, only two thirds of us function. Mm -hmm. Our soul function, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Because our soul has has the mind, the will, and the emotions. Right. And the body functioned with the five senses: what we hear, what we see, what we smell. Mm -hmm. But our spirit man never functioned because it died when Adam fell. Yeah. Okay. So remember now that God is a spirit. Okay. So our only relationship with God is through our, our, spirit. our spirit. So if you, our spirit is dead, what, when we, what, what, what do we do? When we're, not in, we're not in agreement with God. But if, if the flesh is dead... And we're living in the spirit, then we're in agreement with God. We can no, no, the, fle the, the, the flesh is alive. Mm -hmm. The flesh is alive, but the flesh is not in control now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So he's saying that we're living from the spirit. Now, what, what does that mean? We are living from the word of God. For That's instance, right. our flesh is saying that we are sick. He says, yeah. don't live by that. Mm -hmm. The word of God says, the word of God says that by the stripe of Jesus, you're healed. Live right. by that. Amen. Right. So we could live by the flesh or we could live by the spirit. Now, remember he's talking here also, Sister Vesper, about carnality. Mm -hmm. Okay, so carnality is living by the flesh. You still have a brand new born again spirit. 
But, but the Holy Spirit is not activated in your newborn again spirit because you're not following the directions and guidance of the word. Right. That right. is what it is saying. Right. right. So, so we, we need to be following the directions of the word to live our lives by the Spiritually. Spirit. Spiritually. Hallelujah. Yes. Glory be to God. We yes. Should be, we should be using the word of God to, to, to live our lives by and, and not by, by what, what we is. see and what we feel and what we sense. Yes. 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 Amen. And if Christ be in you, then the body is dead because of sin. But the spirit is life because of righteousness. Right. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies. Okay, stop and right there. Spirit. Stop right there. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, Sister Love was telling me, and I'll never forget this, we should do we should not only read the bible but we should know what it says so we, need, we have to study it now do you understand what it means when it when it says that the spirit of god in us will quicken our mortal bodies mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what does that mean well it, it means that the, the spirit that that raised christ from the dead when we accepted christ as our savior that spirit came into us to to to, to sort of guide us in, no, and we, quickens, we, quickens our right, mortal body. This is our mortal, mortal body. Right. This body here is mortal, which means that it is going to die. Mm -hmm. so we are going to get so right. an, an immortal body that is not going to die. So right. what he's saying is that this body here that is subject to death, mm -hmm. when that Holy Spirit comes into it, that quicken means that it will give life, life. Yeah. to life. the mortal life. body. <laughs> It will yes. give life to the mortal body so that yes. the mortal body would be well and whole. Our yes. problem is our understanding. Mm -hmm. yes. yes. That's my problem. We made whole, yeah, in yes. Christ. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay, go ahead. He says, uh, but if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Okay, Let's, let me make another point here, sister. You, you yes. see what you see, you know, Jesus' body was dead, yes, uh -huh. and it is the spirit that gave it life, right? Yes, the same way that spirit will quicken our bodies and give them life, life, right? yes. yes. Now, when we talk about the life of God, there's no sickness in the life of God, yep, yep, uh -huh. right. there is no lack in the life of God, but that is what we've been given, right. Yeah. Yeah. But, we, but we're not using it. No. Yeah. No. Go ahead. He said, Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh, to live after the flesh. For if you live after the flesh, you shall die. But if through the spirit, but if you through the spirit do modify the deeds of the body, you should die. You should live. Let me read that again, Brother Joel, and then you can talk. He says, For if you live after the flesh, you shall die. But if you through the spirit do modify the deeds of the body, you shall live. For as many okay. of you as you, you say you want an explanation on that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Adam and Eve mm -hmm. Separation. had the word of God mm -hmm. to live by. Mm -hmm. They were so close to God that God would come in person. Mm -hmm. In person and meet with them in the cool of the day. Right? Nothing. Now, now God is what? Oh, by, no. Jesus said that God is a, is a spirit. Spirit. Yes. Okay. So yeah. they had God's spirit in person mm -hmm. with them. Right? But yes. they, they, they ignored that and they started living by the flesh. They're listening to, you see, Satan can only make contact with us through our flesh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So he's telling them, if you listen to me, and the mm -hmm. only thing Satan do is lie. Mm -hmm. You won't be like God. Yeah. How could somebody that God made could be God? Mm -hmm. That's a lie. That's a lie. That's a lie. <laughs> That's a lie. And 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 anytime Satan wants to get control, take control of our lives, mm -hmm. he finds a lie to tell us. That's true. Mm -hmm. But that is the next. That is an interesting scripture you're reading there. 
But uh -huh. with all that Satan is trying to do, you, you heard what you read in the first verse, there uh -huh. is therefore now no, no, no condemnation to those of us who are in Christ yeah, Jesus. Christ Jesus. You're right. That's right. He says, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, we are sons of God. So if we are led by the Spirit of God, we are sons, as we are led by the Spirit of God, we sons are sons and daughters of God. of God. Hallelujah. Yes. For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but have received the spirit of adoption, that whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself beareth witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then ears, and ears of God, and joint ears with Christ. Okay, so, so now what, what, what he's doing here now, and we could actually, we could actually stop, there. stop there, because stop he's, there. he's going into details now about what we have, and yes. who we are, and how we should function. Yes. All right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So go ahead and pray now, Sister Vespa. Okay. So, Heavenly Father God, we come to you as ears, joint ears with Christ. We are, the, we are righteous because we, we are your children. And we thank you for the love that you have for us. We thank you for the wisdom that you have given us. We thank you that you have quickened us with your Holy Spirit. Just like you have quickened Jesus and raised him from the dead, you have quickened us and given us life, that we know that we have life in you. And as we use your words to... to uplift ourselves, to raise up ourselves, we will continue to grow in your words. And we thank you, Jesus, for your words. We thank you, Jesus, for, you, for your death on the cross, because without you dying on the cross, we would not have this life that we have. And we Amen. thank you as we come tonight to learn more about your words, that you will continue to guide us, you will continue to open the eyes of our understanding, that we may know that your riches are for us, and that you will continue to guide and direct us in all that we do and say. And we thank you for Brother Joel as he's traveling. We ask you for traveling mercies for him and for all the sisters who are traveling and for sisters who have traveled and have come back. For all of us who are here tonight, I'm, 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 I'm covering myself with your grace and your mercies for my eyes because my eyesight is like um, having like a film over my eye right now. It's just being here. And so I'm believing that in the name of Jesus Christ, I am healed. And I thank you, Jesus, for your great love and your mercies. And we come now to, to hear more from, from you, Brother Joel. We thank you and we come in Jesus Christ's holy name. Amen. 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 All right. Let's go back to James chapter 4. Good night, everybody. Good night. Sandra, I'm in your country. I just got here. Good night. Good night. <laughs> Jamaica. In Jamaica. <laughs> yeah. Just got here today. But I wouldn't miss Monday night for nothing. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Monday night has been a real mm -hmm. blessing, and I just thank you, sisters, for giving me the opportunity. Monday it night has been a blessing to me. Monday night, Monday the world night. To share. Oh my goodness! Yeah. God, God, God bless you. God bless you. God bless, God bless you. you. Blessing to me too. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. James chapter four, verse ten. We have, and next week we're not we're not having any session. Next week is July fourth. So I said, let's see if we could cover some, some more of James, because we're going to be in James a little while. James chapter 4, verse 10. Look at the first, the first clause of that verse. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord. <laughs> and, 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 you know, I like steps. <laughs> Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord. Now, James is not saying that God is going to humble us. He's saying... We have to humble ourselves. That is our responsibility. Mm -hmm. Right. That is my responsibility. Mm -hmm. Okay. So since we, we, we are to humble ourselves according to James, here is my question, sisters and brothers. How do I individually humble myself? How do I humble myself? Because remember now, if I'm not humble, I am in trouble. Remember that? It yes. kind of rhyme. If I'm not humble, 
I'm, I'm in, in trouble. trouble. Keep that in mind. If you're not humble, you're in trouble. Okay. But so how do I humble myself so that I stay out of trouble? Not be cocky. That is my responsibility. That's not God's responsibility. That's mine. Not be cocky. Watch what you say, the things you do, the way you treat people, the way you speak to people. In, every, put, in, every, in everything that you do, you be mindful. Put Jesus mindful first. Of the way you, you do it. Put Jesus first and you secondary. Tell us how you do that because I want to know the steps to do that. You know, I like I, my <laughs> steps is the, you, you watch what you say to people. You don't be cocky. You don't think you got a job because you have the qualification to get it. You have to believe that it's because of God you got that job. He is mm. your source. He is your source and everything source. else is your resource. Okay, go ahead and teach the lesson because you're on it. Yeah, he's the source. <laughs> and everything else is your resource. And it's because of him you got that degree. It's because of him you get that wife or that husband. It's because of him you got those children. He could have made you no, barren. No children. That house that you live in him is because of him he provided that house. You don't believe I got that $500,000 house because I was able to pay for it. He provided the resources for you to Hallelujah. be able to pay for it. And that's why you have to humble yourself. You don't believe it's because it's your job. You were able to pay for it. You go on your job and you don't be cocky. You, you just, even if your, your supervisor is cocky or your manager is cocky, you don't have to go along with all the way she behaves. You humble yourselves. And that's what I believe. Okay. I think Caroline, you were saying something. Yeah, I was saying you have to put Jesus first. Like, if you need to make a decision, don't just do it on your own because you of yourself is nothing. So you have to make sure you communicate with him and hear his word and pray and do whatever he says. Okay. Yeah, and, and you give, give your day to the Lord. Yes. Yes, when you be start thankful. your day, everything you are going to do, everything yes. you're going to say, small or big, give it to the Lord. That's right. Mm. You could be washing up your dishes, you could be praising God, thanking Him. That you, you're not complaining that you have so many dishes to wash. Be thankful that you have dishes to wash. <laughs> Be thankful you have dishes. <laughs> Be thankful you have dishes. <laughs> and and, and, and all you have to yes. do is to just wash them because some just people ain't got them. no dishes. That's right. Before yes. you do anything, make sure you say, you know, if it wasn't for God, I wouldn't be alive. So just think of him giving you life and humble yourself because he can take it from you any second. I, I think uh, my, my thing is just the be led by the Holy Spirit, because at the cross, even Jesus himself, he, you know, he, he was, he was tough. He said, not my will, but your will, even Jesus himself. So we all say in all this humble, 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 none of us can do it. If no, you're not no, 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 sister love. Yeah? No, no, let's go back to the scripture. Which it one? says, the scripture say, the scriptures say, humble yourselves. That's our responsibility. Oh, yeah, I say, yeah, I agree. The, okay. I agree. But I am saying, all this humility, yeah, I'm just saying, we as believers, the Holy Spirit will help us to humble ourselves. Based, left on us by ourselves, by our two senses. We cannot do that. That's what I'm okay. saying. Okay, well, let, let, let yeah. me see if I could put a little light on it. I hear, yeah. I understand where you're coming from. Yeah. The so, Holy Spirit is our energy. Yeah. It's but a, the a only spirit. reason, the only reason why James would be telling people to humble themselves is why? Mm -hmm. Is why? Why is he telling them to humble themselves? Because, yeah, if, if, you, if you don't... Why have... would somebody tell somebody to humble themselves? So they don't get ahead of themselves and think they, they don't can humble. do it. Yep. No? Yep. No? But they, didn't he say no, that he... Let me ask the question again. Listen now. Listen now. Because you know the answer. Why would James tell somebody or Christians to humble themselves? 
Because that is something you have to take practice. Why? No, 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 no. Why would I tell you to humble yourself? Because, because, they don't because at the time, everybody was proud. People thought that exactly. they were Exactly. Yeah. 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 They know the know, they know the laws and they believe that because they can know the laws, they, they are upright. That's well, right. all of that is okay. But the only reason why... Okay. Why would you tell somebody to close a door? Because it's open. Oh, the door is open. open. <laughs> the door is open. So he's telling them to humble themselves because they are full of pride. Mm -hmm. And we know what pride does to people. Mm -hmm. Pride is a destructive disease. Pride That's, is a disease. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. And it That's is true. more deadly than any cancer. Mm -hmm. mm. That is why he's telling them, you humble yourself. And, 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 and the explanations that you have given, sisters, for humility are powerful. Mm -hmm. Yep. Those, that's, that's how you humble yourself. You recognize. Listen, listen you will recognize, right? Mm -hmm. That it is not us. Yes. Because biblical humility means, right, that we believe what God says about us. And, and, and it has nothing to do with anybody else's opinion, including ours. Whatever God say about us is it. So, yes. That's it. And that is what we're supposed mm -hmm. to accept. Don't listen to Satan telling you that you could be better than God like what he told Adam and Eve. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, is mm -hmm. what he got them? They were the wealthiest people in the world and they mm -hmm. end up with just one suit. And that soup was made out of fig leaves. Get a good one. You, you see, you, pride is a disease. I know. It is. It's true. It's true. That's true. And it is not a disease that you pray to get rid of. You get rid of it. Amen. Consciously, yes. we we'll try. So humility, humility <laughs> requires embracing who we are in Christ over mm -hmm. what we think we are in this flesh here. Yep. It's true. Okay. So 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 to be biblically humble, we need to dump our egos into the garbage. Mm. That is where they belong and do everything possible. Everything possible not to get close to that garbage again. That garbage mm. that is filled with pride. So we need to stop dragging around garbage of self-promotion. Mm. I used to have a lot of that. And, I, and, and I, I understand how destructive that is. You're dragging around mm -hmm. a thousand pounds of garbage. Yeah, wait. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Promoting yourself. So you, you, mm -hmm. what, what, why do we have to promote ourselves? The Bible said, let God promote us. Mm. We can't promote ourselves. Promote ourselves for what? What, can, what concert are we going to have? Wow. Well. Mm -hmm. Promote ourselves? No. No, we don't promote ourselves. We promote the one who gave us ourselves. Mm. Tonight, I want us to look at Brother Herod. Look at what happened to Herod. You, have, you hear about King Herod? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. In Acts chapter 12, let's go there. Let's go there to see how destructive, how destructive pride is. And James wants want us to deal with that because he knows that we are special people. And we are children of the Most High God, where God is the one who has total and absolute responsibility for us and God wants mm -hmm. to carry out his responsibility and we are turning around and telling people I'm responsible, responsible for what? For what? The mm -hmm. only thing we should be doing is praising and worshipping and glorifying Jesus. God for what mm -hmm. he has done for us. Now Herod, Herod was very angry with the people of Tyre, Tyre and Sidon. Right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And their country depended on the king's country for food. So they came to him with a united front to make peace. Right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Now we know that peace and anger don't go together. 
No. You, 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 <laughs> there is no peace in anger. You know what is in anger? Danger. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Danger is in anger. So they, they were able to win over Blastus. That was the king's personal aid, right? So on one appointed day, Herod dressed himself with royal clothing and he sat on his throne and he made a speech. And this is uh, a speech full of pride. I'm paraphrasing as I go so that we could get clarity. Okay, 20, yeah. Yeah. 12, 20. So the people shouted, right? Now, what is happening here is that they know Herod, the Herods are wicked people. So they're trying their best to say something nice to him, right? So that they can get him to show some kindness to them so he doesn't starve them. So they shouted mm -hmm. to him. That when, he, when he was making his speech, the, the, the people shouted, the voice of God, that's the voice of God and not of man. Herod, you know, an old wicked man. And the people now are trying to praise him. And by praising him, they're saying that what he's saying is the voice of God. And look at what happened. Immediately, an angel of the Lord struck him. You know why the angel of the Lord struck him? Because he didn't give That's glory. Glory to God. He didn't yeah. give God the glory. Yeah. He can. And he was eaten by worms, worms immediately and died. Mm -hmm. Now let, let me tell you who, let me tell you about these Herods before before we go into our discussion. Let me tell you about these Herods. Now, Herod Agrippa I was the grandson of Herod the Great, mm -hmm. who slaughtered the infants of Bethlehem. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right? Remember what was happening during Jesus' time? They had to take uh -huh. Jesus down to Egypt. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was but one of the, the kids born under a year, yes. Yes. <laughs> And then we have Herod the Agrippa. Agrippa. This is, right. This is the Herod we're talking about in our text. The and most... he was the nephew of Herod Antipas. Antipas. Yeah. Patriarch, right. Antipas. Who killed Moses. John the Baptist. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so 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 you see, you see the killing, the killing anger. So they he killed John the Baptist. So these Herodian kings seem to have been especially nasty people. I don't know, I can't find a better word to call them, Sister Law, but nasty. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right? So so when the coastland cities of Tyre, that, so when the coastland cities of Tyre and Sidon somehow angered Herod, the people looked for some means to appease him. That's what we just read, because he controlled mm -hmm. the sources. And, and Sister Glenda, you were saying, something so powerful which was part of my study he controlled the sources not the resources mm -hmm. you see, if, if, yes if you, if you control the resources it means that when the source dry up, dry up you too. can you can resource the source you can that's bring, right mm -hmm. right but but if if you only control the source once the source is gone you resource. have nothing how is it going to get resourced how is it going to get yeah. Right, new stuff in it, right? And so mm -hmm. we know the difference between the source. Do you know there are some people, you know, because God has blessed them, and they are in a position to do things for other people, and they, they are resources. They figure that they are the resource. Right, they think they think you are the they, 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 you are the they are your source. They, yes, they, they, they well, think that well, they are well, your source. To some extent, they don't know that God blessed them to be a resource to you. No, they, they'll never be the resource. They'll be a source. Mm -hmm. Yes. For instance, mm -hmm. we get water from different springs. That spring is a source of water. Mm -hmm. But hear me now, that spring can dry up. Mm -hmm. So if that spring dries up, you no longer have a source. Now, to reactivate that source, the resourcer, God himself has to send rain. Hello? Because he mm -hmm. is the resource. He is the one who re, re, refills. 
he refills, he, he re-energizes. Mm -hmm. whatever, whatever we lack, he provides. And that is what happened to the resourcer. When everything goes, remember, remember, we were studying about the famine that hit, um, hit the widow woman. Yes. And, and, yeah. and, and, and things got so bad that there was no food to eat. There was no water to drink. Could you imagine being in a situation where there's no food to eat and there is no water to drink and your only option is what? Death. Well, I don't care how poor and, and I don't care how powerful the king of Israel was during that period of time. He couldn't do nothing to help anybody, even though he had the title of king. But our resource is the King of oh, Kings, King of Kings, and the <laughs> Lord of Lords. Oh, oh, oh. My God! So when Herod and those guys are behaving stupid, yes, full of pride, <laughs> what is going to happen to them is destruction, and that is what James is trying to tell us, Jesus. brothers and sisters, stay away from oh. pride. Mm -hmm. mm. Stay away from pride. So worms at his body. So God's power given to man is for us to use to glorify God and not ourselves. So when we start supporting others, you know, we bring glory to God. How so? God. Because mm -hmm. we are God's extension. So as we bring glory to God, mm -hmm. God makes the sources, the sources, make us sources for people who are in need of the provisions mm -hmm. that only heaven alone can provide. So Herod mm -hmm. was stupid. He was stupid. He sat in a judgment chair, dressed to kill. And then he's going to talk about his greatness. Only God is great. So he made a speech. And the people also made this crazy statement to him. And instead of Herod ignoring it and saying, no, it's not me. It's not me. I am not great. He accepted it. And what happened to him? Worms at his body right, right where he was making that speech. And that is what James is telling us. Stay away from pride. So pride is a disease that brings destruction. And we are the ones who have to, we're the ones who have to fix it. James says, we are the ones who should get rid of pride. Because he's saying to humble ourselves. And I, I, I like the explanations your sisters gave tonight about humbling ourselves. It is recognizing that God alone, God alone is the resource for everything that happens in this world. Remember, you know, as Sister Love was praying tonight, and, and prayers are so powerful, even though they're not for us, they are to God alone who could answer them. Right? And what is so important about prayer? Remember Jesus was, was teaching his disciples. What, what we're saying is the Lord's prayer is really not, that's not the Lord's prayer, you know. If we want to know what the Lord's prayer is, we have to go to John chapter 17. <laughs> but, it, but, but what we're reading here in, um, in Matthew 6 is the Lord's lesson on prayer. That is what it is. It is a lesson on prayer where he's telling the disciples that the only prayer that God would ever answer. I hear people bragging about God answer their prayer and this and that. Yes, he answers our prayers. It's not, it's, we give him glory. But the only prayer that God is going to answer is the prayer that is his will. Mm -hmm. That's true. He cannot answer a prayer that is not his will. And we know what God's will is. His mm -hmm. will is his word. Now, there are sometimes, right? There are sometimes when we know exactly what God's will is. We know that it is, it, it is his will that the entire world is saved. Mm -hmm. That's his will. Yes. But even though it is his will that everybody else, 
say that everyone should be saved. Everyone is not saved. Mm -hmm. Why? Because of your own free will that you give us, you give us free will, and we have to. Well, use it gives it. us free will, but why is everyone not saved? It's not because you have free will or you don't have free will. Why they, they is everyone not saved? They right, accept. because they have not accepted, accepted what was given. Yep. Do you know that it is the same thing for healing? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Accepted it. Yep. We have not accepted it. Accepted it. it is. It's, it's a already... hard thing to come come to grip with. You already done it. it. You already done it. It is his will. Just like how he has already paid the price for all of our salvation, but we have to accept it. Accept it, yep. It is the same thing with our healing. With everything. So we know what the will of God is. Now, sometimes we run into a problem where, for instance... We are praying for, we are praying for, there is an election in a country and we're praying and, and we, have a, we have a political side that we support, right? Mm -hmm. There is no clear indication as to who's, who, who God wants. We don't know who God wants to lead. So in a situation like that, what do we do? We, when we do not know, I use that point to raise, when we do not know expressly what the will of God is in a situation, how do we pray? Let it will be done. We pray, let his will be done. We pray let for everybody in the situation. Yeah. We pray for everybody in the situation. The situation. Yep. And, and pray that his will be done. Be done. Be done. Be done. Because he, God knows who he wants to be in power at a certain time right. mm -hmm. and sometimes he allows the most ruthless person mm -hmm. and, and we we wonder why 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 we we don't know why what god is doing he said he, no. he he do the foolish things of this world to confound the wise that's what i'm saying it, it, because it because looks foolish is, to us it looks yes. foolish to us but 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 but, but his 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 but his, right. his foolishness foolish is greater than any of any of man's wisdom yes that's right Seriously. Mm -hmm. so we we're in a we, we're in we're in good times here yep and that's why we are so, not to lean on our own understanding of things exactly we don't know so so you know you know that like herod a lot of men like to be worshipped like gods. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that again. Like to be worshipped like gods. But there is a mm -hmm. lesson to be learned from Herod. Because the only person that we should worship is who? The God. God. God and nobody else. So, so this information is provided in scripture so that we will avoid the temptation to walk in pride because pride is going to bring us to self yes. So instead, we are to elevate those around us. So, so, so what we're supposed to be doing here now, instead of talking about ourselves, we should be elevating those around us. That is what James is saying. You see a sister or a brother who is trying to do something good to benefit humanity. We are supposed to get behind them and give them the support. Take ourselves out of the picture. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And even as we support that person, that person also is supposed to take themselves out of the picture. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And give support to somebody else who mm -hmm. is trying to do something good for the community. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because everything good has God in it. Mm -hmm. But only if it has the right motive. Let me say that again. Because we do people do stuff that looks good, but they got the wrong motive. Mm -hmm. It is all about them and nobody else. So mm. that so that so that they can get praise and worship. Mm. Now we have to be very careful. 
we have to be very careful so that our motives match God's motives. How, 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 how do we know when our motives match God's motives? You have that peace. Mm. You're gonna have you're gonna have the peace of God. You're gonna you have, have that peace, peace with, when you make that decision. You're not struggling like when you struggle and mm. have a double mind and you don't you're very on un, unrest. Have like you're not restful. That that means you know you you're struggling because you have the Holy Spirit right. conscience. That's why you know that something is not right. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, we were talking about a double mind the other day is that you're trying to go forward and backwards at the same time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that is an impossibility. So James here now is telling us in, in, in verse 10 that if we humble ourselves, which is our responsibility, and he, God, will lift you up. And he will lift so, you so, up. So we have a responsibility to humble mm -hmm. ourselves and when we humble ourselves, God now is able to yes. exercise yes. his ability by doing what? By lifting yes. us up. What does that mean? For God lifting us up. What does that mean? Oh. How does God lift up the Bless lift up? Them? Uh I, I will yeah, like Bless you that's with what we need. Mm, I, I will say, like the you know uh when you try to go, do good work, enemy is so funny and wicked. So, for example, like God give you an assignment, you're doing good works. Uh, let's, let's focus on the question, though, Sister Love. <laughs> yeah. We're talking about now, how does God lift up the humble? We're going to get back to what you're saying because that is part of the answer. But I want us to deal with the first piece of it. How does God lift up the humble? Right. Prayer. How does he lift? How does God lift up the humble? God not praying. He answered our prayer. He rises up. 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 He that he will elevate you there and just say, who said, nah, 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 nah. my sister, yeah. <laughs> he tried to, somebody who he, tried to smite you, that's what the point I would try to make. God will just elevate you. our prayers. Yeah, elevate you. <laughs> and he elevates us. And, and I like that one, where he prepares a table yep. for us in the, the very presence of our enemies. enemies. And yep. our enemies just have to stop there and starve to death while we eat. Mm-hmm. Food prepared the, 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 our enemies will stop there with their mouth open. Yep, yep, yep. Mm -hmm. They can't they can't eat that food that is coming from heaven's kitchen. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> they'll be in a, they will be in amazement. Yep, yep. So mm -hmm. there are two conditions that we could find ourselves in, eh? Mm -hmm. Humility and pride. Yep. But God is not going to have anything to do with us when pride is in control of our lives. Mm. So the proud, the proud, God has no connection with. So clearly we see that pride is sinful. Pride is sinful. And sin is deadly. And manager, yes. Another thing that just come to me is that when um, <clears throat> we humble ourselves and our enemies see us um, not re uh, like our humility towards them, that also brings a change in the adversary's um, part. Not, not, really. not really. Which so, adversary? So one second. Say that again, sister. Okay. So what, what I'm saying is, for example, um, you have a situation where you're dealing with a proud <clears throat> person in a situation, and when when um, when the, 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 the person see how you you um, handle the situation, 
does that also cause them to have a, like a, a, to change their like you know the fight that they are putting up against you or do, do they become shameful of their you know what they're doing yeah action yeah well the thing about it eh, remember what the bible <laughs> says about jesus humility mm -hmm. he humbled himself and did what mm -hmm. completely surrendered to the to the father he surrendered to death that was the requirement right mm -hmm. for, for so so what 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 you're saying sister sandra is that when people see humility in other people Mm -hmm. they become scared mm -hmm. they become afraid because what they're seeing is an opposite mm -hmm. spirit mm -hmm. the one that they are displaying mm -hmm. and that opposite spirit of humility remember we just read that it causes god to lift you up mm -hmm. okay so it so, so if god is lifting you up in front of your enemy Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What else could they be but scared? Hmm. They, they die to the way they are. Worried. Because Confused. something supernatural is happening that they cannot explain. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And also, and also, like persons who might be um like in the in the um surrounding of the um in the, in the surrounding of what's happening. They also like aside and, and watching and also observing how you deal with a situation and also because I'm 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 speaking from it was just this evening I was in Home Depot and I was speaking to um my cousin in Jamaica and she was saying to me if you if you hear if you hear your name if you if you hear it's ringing. It's me that is calling your name. Because she said, she said, you know, I sit back and I watched you. And she said, I take my hats off to you. In a situation that, you know, I've, I've, gone, I've, I'm, I've gone through or I'm going through. And she said, in spite of that situation, you still is doing good to the person. And she said, she said, um, <clears throat> I admire you so much. And it, it, it makes me, it makes me think that it's the only right thing to do and so she was she was she was using the scenario with another scenario that another person and she was like look at what my cousin look how my cousin could have retaliated but in spite of that situation she still handled the situation with humility with love compassion and so and so i'm saying that to say there are other persons that are also watching you going through the scenario. Yeah, but you see, it is really not the individual, like the spirit that is controlling the individual. Mm -hmm. And that is why um, James is talking about humility and pride this way. Right? Because... Mm -hmm. Individuals from time to time, from time to time, we, 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 we kind of go off track, right? Mm -hmm. So he wants us to focus not on individuals, but like yes. the spirit of humility and the spirit of pride, because those two spirits mm -hmm. counteract each other. Each other. Uh -huh. So we're surrendering to the spirit of humility. So what mm -hmm. they're seeing is not Sandra, they're not seeing yes. Joel, they're not seeing Dr. Love. What mm -hmm. they're seeing at it's work quite, is the spirit, the spirit of, of humility. humility. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The spirit of humility. And mm -hmm. when that controls our lives, we are in good shape because we just saw here that it is God himself who lifts us up. Mm -hmm. Lifts us up. Humility. Humility. God lifts us up. So, so, so clearly we need to stop practicing pride. Let in order for God to lift us up, we got to stop mm -hmm. practicing pride. Yeah, let others see the Christ in you. Mm -hmm. and, then that's how, and that's how you, you can humble yourself by just let others see you being Christ-like. Yeah. And 
and and and and they and whatever it is, it, it, it will, it will say it. So that person really handled themselves with the Christ, the Christ, the love mm -hmm. of them. That's Humble right? yourselves, the scriptures say, under the mighty yeah, hand of God. Mm -hmm. Humble yourself. Humble yourself. Be yeah. nice. Be gentle. Be kind. Be loving. Be caring. Be supporting. All of those things bring humility, cause humility to thrive in our lives. Mm. So then we continue now where he's saying, okay, so now that you understand, Sandra, mute, please. Now that we understand that humility is necessary, <laughs> he's going now to another area that we have problems with. We got problems with pride. And now listen to what he's saying. Do not speak good of another brother. Is that what you said there? Evil. Evil. <laughs> Evil. That 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 is a command, you know. Do not speak evil of another brethren. When it comes to our brothers and sisters, no matter what is happening, we cannot speak evil about them. And here is what, what, what I believe James is saying. When he says, do not speak evil of one another. And if we're humble, we're not going to speak evil of one another. That's true. And he's saying to us, do not say what the devil tells us to say about our brethren. Hello. He wants us to say only what God says about them. You know, we look at people. We look at our brothers and sisters in Christ in particular. And we see them going through all kinds of hell, right? And you know what the adversary gets us to do? Sister Glenda, you know what the adversary gets us to do? Condemn. To judge them, to judge them. Yeah. Condemn. Huh? To condemn them, to judge them. Judge, yeah. Pray for and them. And not good or evil. <laughs> And, to pray for them. And what we need to be doing is no, praying for them. No, let's take it in step. We didn't get to the prayer part yet. <laughs> Empathize. We didn't get there yet. To talk about <laughs> them. To talk about them. No. Nope. We talk about them in the most but negative the derogatory way. way. Derogatory way. Yes. But now Sister Carolyn has the, 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 the cure. So talk about the cure now, Sister Carolyn. But you I love the steps, you know. <laughs> so instead of condemning them, you should just pray for them and lift them up. Ask God to bless them. Even when you don't want to do it, but that's the right thing to do. Right. Why is it? But here's the question, though. Why is that the right thing to do? Because it's like that's forgiveness. Like... It's going to heal you instead of the person. The word of God said, "Do good unto those that mm -hmm. despise, fully use you." But uh, no, and also, no, what if I'm not, not, no, no. Let, let's 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 see. It makes you feel point. better. Let's see if we but can feel I what believe we say. the reason the reason we need to pray for them, we don't Jolly know God what the struggles are. We yeah. are not all knowing. We are and not all seeing, That's right. and we have no idea what is going on in their life, what made them do what they do, or say what they do, or behave the way they behave. We have no idea. So what and we only really God need to go, them. go before God and pray mm -hmm. that somehow they will have peace in their heart. Not somehow, that God will, it's not God somehow, it's that God will give them peace them. in their heart. Yes, Sister Monica, yes. go ahead. I said, God is the only one who can really change them, can bring them to some sort of realization what they're doing, that they can have some insight. Because some people don't really know, they don't know what they're doing. They don't see what their, their effect on other people. They're, they're me, 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 whatever the cost to other people. And only God, I think, can only God can change their hearts. Exactly. And the, what is interesting about all that is happening to us, right? 
as we go through this whole spiritual development. Because we are all going through this development. And what is helping us to develop really is the word. Here we have James telling us, giving us really good insight of how we're supposed to function and what happens based on how we function. The thing about it, you know, is that all of us here, all of us here on this line, the, the way God sees us is completely different to how any of us see ourselves. No matter how good, how good a light you could ever see yourself. You could never see yourself in that light that God sees you. God sees mm -hmm. us perfect, you know. Yeah. God sees us perfect and is able to do that because of what Jesus did. On the cross, yep. Remember, you know, that we are the righteousness, righteousness of, God of God in Christ. In Christ. Yes, right. So how are we going to speak evil about somebody who is the righteousness mm. of God in Christ, who is permanently removed from evil? Mm. That's right. mm. We're the righteousness of God in Christ. That is how he sees us. He sees us as, as though we have never committed a sin. Never. Yeah. But yet we look at that's, other brothers and sisters' faults and we speak evil about mm. them. And James is saying, don't do that. Mm. Now, James is trying to get us to a place, you know, where in this very life where we live now, we can overcome the forces of evil. That is where James yeah. is trying to get us. Yes. So, so, so he's telling us, do not say about our brothers and sisters what the devil is telling us to say right. only say what god says about them and i remember a long time ago in one of our monday nights uh, one monday night studies when we were meeting before before covid sister sandra said that god has never said a bad thing about anybody any any yeah about any believer <laughs> never mm -hmm. So if God, the creator of all of us, is not saying anything bad about his children, we should not do that either. Because we're brethren, we're brothers and sisters in Christ. So in the first place, we should only give voice to the word of God and never give voice to what the devil is trying to say to us. And that is really our weakness, you know. Most of the problems that we have in our lives is giving voice to what the devil say more so than giving voice to what the word of God say. Our new born again spirit enables us to overcome every single thing that is happening in our lives that is not of God. We got to give voice to the word of God and not to what the devil is trying to say, say to us. So he who speaks evil of a brother, James is saying, judges his brother. Hear that? And, and when we judge our brother, he say we speak evil of the law and we judge the law. You see the trouble we put ourselves, the trouble, the kind of trouble we could put ourselves in and not even realizing it because we don't know what the word is saying. So he's saying now we judge the law. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, I raise my hand. Pardon me? I saw I'm raising my hand up. I'm raising both of mine, sister. Love. <laughs> <laughs> no, the, no uh, you know, I, I want to be practical so that we, because we could, Say the practical, 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 practice. The enemy has it like, for example, we are uh, in the body, we are believers, and most of all, they somebody do something like very obviously, obviously, obviously bad that there's mm -hmm. no way for you not to talk about it except, uh, except you know, it's only Jesus, for example. Judas, he's not he's gonna betray, he know everything, but yet he didn't he didn't expose him. But he used parable. There are something you know how we, let's just be real. I'm not saying I'm just saying so that you know when we enter that situation, we catch ourselves. There's no way somebody will come and for example, maybe you're in the church, 
somebody you left your wallet somebody grab it and run maybe you have a lot of money there and you cannot talk about that person or just reprimand them because we are believers so and or even more some other stuff that happened like you see somebody who went and did something to a young person in the bathroom is he or she is he's a believer you have to talk about I'm, you know what i mean there's no way you could just walk away without judging that person so that we can catch ourselves i mean to, to the practical situation yeah but let me let me bring it home very yeah. practical yeah very very practical yeah a woman was caught in adultery <laughs> The religious people who wanted to <laughs> exercise the law brought the woman to Jesus. <laughs> so everybody was speaking badly about this woman, except one person. Mm -hmm. And that was Jesus. And listen to Jesus' words to her. I am, but here it is, here it is, before we even get there, mm -hmm. before, and, 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 you know, scripture is so instructive. We put ourselves the, in all kind of trouble because if Jesus wanted to enforce the law, you know, Jesus could have stoned all of those people as they were walking away. He could have stoned all of them to death because hear what jesus said jesus said those of you without sin you bring mm -hmm. her here to me saying that you caught her in sin the sin of adultery in the first place you only bring her where's the other person you didn't bring the other person you bring one person and jesus <sighs> said all right go ahead and kill her um, but before you kill her mm -hmm. before you kill her let me tell you one thing Make sure, make sure, make sure that you're in a position that you will not be killed either. Okay, okay, okay. That is what Jesus so told him. Yeah. And you know what they did? You know what they did? They took her off and left Jesus with the woman. I left Jesus with the woman. Yeah, um, okay. Well, okay. So, so they opened themselves for an opportunity for Jesus to call the other religious people and say, stone uh -huh. them people to death. They confess to me that they sin. That's why they left. Oh, okay, okay. You know, we we'll just leave it. Uh, but I, I so just all of once... us have issues. I mean, this yeah, is a we bad have issue. situation. Yeah, but what? What? I'm, okay. okay. The, let me just say just in a, in a second. I'm sorry. Like no, it, okay. it, like it happened to me because I'm you know I'm just so that we all learn from from that. You know, somebody is in the church. I won't mention which church. I, I get like five thousand. I won't mention it. The person. It took me, I didn't even want to say anything to anybody about anyone. I have to really fast and pray so that I will have the endurance not to go tell it to. I didn't say anything to anyone at all. It, it took my money. I went to the church and told the leader of the church that because of me, he's not coming to church because of, and not telling them that he, he took my money, five grand. I didn't even say it bothers me. I have to really fast and pray for God to help me to forgive. That's what I'm saying. It is not easy when a thing like that happen. It's not easy for you to just not judge that person. You have to go extra mile. That's what I brought right. it. If, if, if God tell you you could do it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If God tell you you yeah. could do it. Yeah. He's only telling you to do it because he's empowered you to do it. So you're right. I mean, Sometimes we have to, we, we, have, we spend time trying to process a lot of things and that's okay. But in the end, you were able to forgive the person. Yeah, because that's my money. That's five grand. That's a lot of money. Yeah, and but five, five, five yeah. grand is, 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 is nothing for God what to give you, mean, you five million. If it was my last money I have to eat and somebody took it, what I'm saying, it is not easy in our flesh, what I'm saying I have well, to really we fast. can't operate right that if we're operating in the flesh it's going to be difficult good that's what i'm saying it but is if us. you come to the spirit now yeah. where with sister sister vespa was reading tonight if we come to the spirit now mm -hmm. where he said the lord is my shepherd i shall not want so if you can't want it mean it doesn't matter how much you steal from me my yeah. wife was my wife valerie was telling me the other day that um my mother 
there was this guy who, who, was, who was always coming and fixing the same thing over and over and over <laughs> and thought that he was fooling my mother. Right? <laughs> and Val says, but, but mom, everybody called my mother mom. Mom, why you keep paying him? And you, and you, you would know, you're, you're a sensible woman, you would know that what he's doing is not right. She says, I know, but what he doesn't know is that he's not stealing from me. What he doesn't know, he's not stealing from me. The resources I have come from God. So if they come from God and you're stealing resources that come from God, you're not stealing from me. Wow. You're stealing from God, you got a real problem. But Brother Joel, as you said that, years ago when my husband was alive, he had a friend who used to fix his car for him. <laughs> and the friend went and tell somebody, that he's robbing my husband, that every time he come to fix the car, he's robbing. You know what my husband said to me? He's a fool. He say, he's not robbing me. He say, he can't rob me. He say, he think he's robbing me. He say, but he's robbing God. He say, but, he believe he's robbing me, but he can't rob me. But you see, we have to have that knowledge. <laughs> yes. And I couldn't understand it. I mean, how I was enraged. I said, I'm not going back to him. Look what he said about you. He said, no, Glenda. He said, sometimes this is how you have to deal. He said, God, give us a spirit within us. And we have to know that God is on our side. God is, he said, he can't rob me unless God allow him to. <laughs> well, I, I am telling you, you see Sister Sandra on the line there, and I have a yeah. wife named Valerie. <laughs> Sometimes there was a time, Sister Love, where they used to upset me with the things that they would do for people. And mind you, I didn't have a problem doing things for people, but they went as far, mm. as far as I'm concerned. Wow. One, one Monday night, we were doing a teaching several years ago, and that is when I got convicted. Mm -mm. You would never go far enough. Mm -mm. You could never go far enough with God's resources because they could never run out. Run dry. Yes, yes. You. <sighs> they convicted me that night and I stopped it. I used to talk to them. I said, you guys, you guys are do going overboard. And then I realized God's resources has no limits. Yep. Wow. Remember, it's not God's sources now, it's his resources. resources. Yep, yep. Yep. Wow. I got it. Yeah. Brother Joel. Brother Joel. Yes, um, Sister Monica, you got the you got the floor. Back to back to um when something when a brother when a brother or sister does something in the body of Christ. We have instructions on how to deal with it mm -hmm, mm -hmm. without condemning that person. Speak to that person and if, if he agrees that he's doing something wrong, then it, it finishes there, it stops there. Mm -hmm. But if not, you bring somebody else in. Right. You know, instead of you go just go and condemning that person talk about that person behind their backs or you know i yeah, i can't we, we remember where i think it's in new that. new test in the yeah, new yeah. testament i think it was it's, it's peter i, 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 I said luke yeah it's there but and also they said it, the, if not again if the person does not you hand him you know you don't deal with him you know that's another one that was severe i don't know Right. I still go with the third one. Yes. The third one, they say, have nothing to do with that person. You know, is there? You know, because I still struggle with that. That third, uh, third aspect well, of it. Well, we had a situation one time where Paul hand hand this guy over to the devil. To the, the devil, devil yeah. Yes. So yes. that his soul would be saved, and he woke up and mm -hmm. say, "Oh Lord, no, 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 I wrong. Lord, forgive me. Everybody, forgive me." But that is, the, that is the beauty about God, is that when we ask for forgiveness, he forgives us. He's a forgiving God. 
If God was not a forgiving God, the human race would have had a problem. She would be not here. <laughs> but what I am learning, what I am learning is that all of the mess we have done, and as, 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 as we, we were saying earlier this evening, we cost Jesus everything, including his life. Mm. All of that was done so that we can be forgiven and be mm. in a right relationship and fellowship with God. You know something? I just look at the time and realize it's 9 or 3. Oh, oh boy. We are having a good time. Having a good time. <laughs> Wow. Yes, I like I like when we have discussions like this. It's mm -hmm. just that we go slow through the scriptures, but we walk away with understanding. Amen. When we're humble, the Lord lifts us up. Yes. And we know what it is to be humble. Mm. And we know it's that so we're good. not supposed to be say, so speaking good. evil. Evil against our brothers. Our Amen. Don't Amen. say what the devil is telling us to say about mm. them. Mm -hmm. Pray for them. Support them Amen. and encourage them because Amen. they're one and the same. Father, yeah. we thank you yeah. for your goodness thank you, Jesus. and your Hallelujah. Thank okay, you, who's communion tonight? Is that you, sister? Yes. <laughs> All right. Turn to Corinthians um, 11. 1 Corinthians 11, verse 23 to 26. Oh, Lord, we just thank you. You guys have all your elements. Yes. So. We just thank you, Lord, for covering us and for le letting us say what you say there, Lord. But as we come in communion, I want to read verse 23, where it says... Um, Okay, for I received from the Lord what I also pass on to you. On the night when he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus mm -hmm. took bread. And this is the same thing. Oh, let me not go into that. <laughs> he gave, he, when he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, broke it, and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So we can take the bread. Mm -hmm. And then he said, in the same way, he also took the cup after supper and said, this cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. You can drink the <clears throat> for <clears throat> for as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. And we just want to give him thanks for his continual protection mm -hmm. and his continual coverage and his continual continuous guidance to us and his giving Brother Joel health and strength to teach us the word. Amen. That is just phenomenal. Amen. And, you know, we just, he just passed on so much to us and we are just so thankful that we can understand, comprehend, and learn all that this and that, you know, we should not curse our brothers or curse anyone else and that whatever anyone takes for, from us, they're not taking it from us. Mm -hmm. God is so, give us so much resource. So let them go ahead and we just pray huh? for them that God will turn yeah. them around and they will understand what's going on. We Amen. just ask him for continuous strength and health and protection in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. I want to have a request, guys. Um, on uh, mm. next week, Sunday, um, me and my family, Austin, and my two grandkids, my daughter and, the, and her husband, we're going to Portugal. Austin is going to be playing soccer in Portugal. Wow. 
So I just ask that you guys keep us in your prayers. Yes. Okay. Yes. Amen. 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 Traveling. And, and I think the following week, I think I should be going to Jamaica the 18th. So just keep me in your prayers also. Amen. And I'm going to see all in two weeks because we have on 4th of July. So have a good week. Okay. Yeah. Yes, okay. Okay. Blessings, 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 everyone. Okay, bye. 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 Good night. Blessings, all. blessings, blessings. God bless you all. Okay, bye. Bye. bye.